Are you glad to be here this morning? Amen. That's a good thing because you're here. So, we have been talking, or started the new series, talking about the holiness of God. Last week, we talked about what is holiness. This week, I've already kind of let you in on it. We're going to talk about the nature of God. And I think we have seen a lot of the nature of God. The song that Anna Louisa just sang talked about the nature of God in Jesus' name. So let's start out here. Now, if you, if you were taking notes and you happen to realize that last week's reference is the same as this week's reference, don't be afraid. I had to look at, at, at Joan and Diane as they were entering stuff. I had to put on there, yes, same reference as last week. Because I knew they would say, did you, did you just mistype this? No, it's the same reference. So if you will do this, turn to Revelation chapter 4. We're going to start looking at the nature of God. We read this last week, but I want us to read it again. Revelation chapter 4, starting in verse 8, says this. Each of the four winged creatures had six wings. Each of the four living creatures had six wings. They were covered with eyes around and inside. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, 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 Lord God, the Almighty who was and is and is to come. Now if you'll do this, turn to Isaiah. Chapter 6. It may sound familiar, but I don't think we can say it too often. Isaiah chapter 6, starting the verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphim were standing above him, and each had six wings. With two they covered their face, with two they covered their feet, and two they flew. One called to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. His glory is fills the whole earth. Pray with me as we look into God's word this morning. Father, as we come before you today, God, as we look at your holiness, God, as we look at your nature, Father, help us to see you as who you are. God, that we don't see you as somebody is portrayed on TV or in a movie or in a storybook, but God, we see how you are proclaimed and who you are described in your word. Father, help us to hear that and to see that this morning. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last week we talked about holiness and what is it. This week, the nature of God. I want you to look at something, if you will, flip back to the Revelation passage real quick. I want you to look at something very particular. We talked about it a little bit last week. Let's talk about the nature of God. Before we get into that, I want to, I want to remind you of some things. Uh, we did the last, the last sermon series about Salvation 101, that sometimes we forget the basics, that we need to go back to the basics. We need to remind, be reminded about salvation. Those of us that are believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we know what salvation is. But I want us to realize this and not to re-preach a sermon, but I want you to realize this. You realize as a believer and follower in Jesus Christ that you still need salvation today as much as you needed it the day you placed your faith and trust in Jesus? I need it as much today as I did then. Because we realize that, that you are saved, you are, will be saved, but we're in that you're being saved. And so we're going to remember that. Well, part of that plays into the nature of God. That is the nature of God, the nature of his holiness. If you'll look in, in Revelation where it talks about the very last part of verse 8, who was and is and is to come. This is not a rhetorical question, so feel free to answer it. Who is like God? I see some people kind of mouthing it a little bit, but who is like God? No one. no one. God has a nature all of his own. I want you to think about your very best friend. Who is your very best friend? Get a little too excited there. 
Who's your very best friend on earth? You can look and say, well, I found this out doing student ministry for so many years. Teenagers can have a best friend this week and a best friend next week and a best friend two weeks ago. And, oh, this is my BFF. Well, you've got about 12 of them. Well, yeah, but they're my best friend for this, for this. But I want you to think about this. Who would be your best friend? That they are the person that you can go to and sit down and talk with and pour out anything. And they're always there. And do they have any flaws? Don't mention them, please. Okay? Do they have flaws? Yeah. If we're honest, we all have flaws. But the nature of God, you realize God has no flaws. God has no flaws. I love the fact where it talks about at the very end of this passage. Who was and is and is to come. Do you realize what that means? Think about that for a minute. He is the Lord God Almighty who was. Are we good with that? God was. Because God spoke, the earth came into being. Who is? Let's not touch that one yet. Let's do the who is to come. Do we trust that God is who he says he's going to be and is to come? And that when, when, when time comes and he is ready in one of two ways, either he calls us home or he comes back to get us, where are we going to spend eternity? With him. Are we, are we good with that? Believers, I, I, you, you kind of gave me a little half-hearted answer there. Are we good with that? Yes. We're good that Jesus came, died on a cross, paid for our sins, was buried in a tomb, rose after three days, ascended to the right hand of the Father, and he said, if you place your faith and trust in me, that you will spend eternity and I will forgive your sins and you can come into an open relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And we believe that. Do we believe that? If we do, then folks, we need to go and look at that middle little section right there who says, and is. That he is the nature of God. Folks, please realize this. We can't separate God from who God was and who God will be because who he is is all of it. Amen. That that is his nature. That what God said he would do, he has done and he will continue to do and he will follow it through to the end. And I can trust him. And I think sometimes we forget this, that the holiness of God is from, and really you can't even say from beginning because when did God begin? But God's, God's holiness is there and God's holiness goes to there and it's all encompassing. That God's holiness does not change. God does not change who was and is and is to come. And the seraphim were saying, holy, holy, holy. He always is. Always will be. He can't change. You realize this? God can't change his nature because he's God. God is holy. Is there, ever, is there ever any time that God is not holy? God is holy all the time. And you look in the passage in Isaiah where it talks about, and this is, this is the part that, that, that gets me about God's nature. God's nature is not confined. Was well, interesting, Sheila and I were talking about that this morning, and it's crazy how, how God will take a small little conversation and just blow it into all kinds of pieces and make sense. And it's like, wow, this is so cool. But think about this for a minute. We can't take God or Jesus and put him in a little box. No. Or as I was saying to, to, to her about, I had a friend that said he preached a message on the Jesus in my pocket. That sometimes we want to take Jesus and we have to realize the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that we can't take Jesus, stick him in our pocket and say, well, I got him when I need him. Most of the folks that know me know I carry a pocket knife. I have always carried a pocket knife. Actually, I was carrying a pocket knife in school back when we could still carry pocket knives in school as a student. 
All of my classmates, I mean, all of my, my, my kids at school when I was teaching, all of my coworkers would come to me because we could actually carry them as, as, as teachers. But they would say, uh, have you got your knife? Yeah, I do. Well, why do you always have it? Because in case I need it. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. You don't carry it in case. You know, it's like, well, I don't think I'll need it. So I just, I carry it in case I need it. Just in case. I can't think of a single day that I haven't needed my knife for something. Opening letters, whatever. Cutting weeds. Not that I enjoy it, but I got it. But do you realize that we can't take God and put him in our pocket and say, I just got him when I need him because he's there. We sometimes make God too small. We compress him and his nature is not like that. His nature is not that we can take and say, well, let's put him in this little box and hang on to him until I need him. Rhetorical question, or you can answer it out loud. Is there ever a time you don't need God? If we're honest. If we're honest. Do this if you would. Turn to the book of Psalms. If you're not familiar with scripture, go to the middle Open it. That should be in Psalms. We're going to look at Psalm 77. We're going to talk about the nature of God. Because this passage to me gives the nature of God. Psalm 77, starting with verse 13. The writer of this psalm says, God, your way is holy. What? Little God, little G God, is great like God. You are the God who works wonders. You reveal your strength among the peoples. With power you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Look at verse 13. God, your way is holy. What God is great like God? Let me ask you that. What God is great like God? Is there a God that's great like God? Is there a God that we can actually call a God that we can even compare to God? There is none. There is none. Here's what I want you to see. Do you realize when Psalms was written? I'm not going to give you a date, but I want you to think about it. Well over 2,000, maybe 3,000 years ago. Has God changed? Look at people over time, how people have changed. Do we change over time? We grow, we hopefully become wiser and smarter, hopefully. We change. God doesn't. God doesn't. And we see here that the writer of the psalm said, what God is there like God? And 14, you are the God who works wonders. He is the God who works wonders. Does God still work wonders today? Yes. He does. He still works wonders. You know what else is, is, is great? that It's not mentioned here, but I think we need to mention it. Do you realize that he provides new mercies every single day? And it's not like, oh, you get the leftovers. Do y'all enjoy leftovers at home? Some days? Don't admit this out loud, but I'm going to ask a question. Very, very rhetorical question here, okay? Very rhetorical question. Because it could get you in a lot of trouble. Have you ever just left your leftovers in the fridge and kind of forgotten about them because you're like, I really don't want to eat those? And then you take them and you toss them. And then you stop and you look and you go, well, that was kind of a waste, wasn't it? <laughs> I looked in the refrigerator. And, and we both have cooking responsibilities at the house. So we're both responsible for what's in the fridge. There's times I've looked in the fridge and gone, ooh, I think I want that. Nope, it's going to take too long to get it ready to have it again. I'm going to leave it. And we had, we had some of our, 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 our former students come over to the house one Friday night. We had a blast. We sat around and played guitars. We talked old stories. We cooked hamburgers. And I know these boys. Well, I thought I knew these boys. They're both about this big around. 
And I would say they're taller than me, but that doesn't take much. But um, they were much taller than me, much bigger than me. And I'm thinking, I've watched these boys. I've taken them on trips. I know what these guys eat. So I fixed all these extra hamburger patties. They didn't eat them. I'm like, okay, either you're getting smarter. I don't know. But anyway, um, so we've got these hamburger patties sitting in the fridge. And I'm going, oh, those were so good. I need to eat one. No, I'll wait till later. Do you realize we don't do that with God's mercies? God's mercies are new each day. I don't take God's mercies and stick them in the fridge and go, I may come back to them later. I'm not interested. I'm going to toss them. God's mercies are new each day because that is God's nature. That is the nature of God because of God's love. God's love for us. This is what I would love for us to be able to share to the world, to yell to the world, to scream to the world if we needed to. God's love is new. His mercy is new every single day. It's not like the same old, same old, same old because it's new. That's his nature. His love is ever continuing ever to where the psalmist says, you reveal, you work uh, God of wonders, you reveal your strength among your peoples. You reveal your strength among your peoples. How many of you, and I'm just going to throw this one out there. How many of you have struggled with something over the past year? I've struggled with something over the past year. Guess where my strength came from? Because I have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ because of God's nature. My strength here comes from God. God, that's what it says. It says you reveal your strength among the peoples. How? He gives you the strength to make it through the situations. He gives you the strength to deal with whatever it is. All the garbage that's going on in your life. And I can find nowhere in scripture, absolutely nowhere in this book that says, give your life to Jesus and your troubles go away. Give your life to Jesus and your, all of your relationships are perfect. Give your life to Jesus and you're not going to have any problems. Folks, I want to tell you this much. That is a lie straight from hell. Amen. What this Bible says, what my Bible says, the word of God says, give your life to Jesus Christ, have a relationship with God through him, and now you have the strength to face whatever comes about. Because we go back to the part of revelation because he is the same. He who was, who is, who is to come. You want to think about that one? Do this real fast. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm going to throw this one out because it fits so well in this passage. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If we believe that we have a triune God, a God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, God is. Amen. And if my strength comes from God and He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that's where the strength comes from. That is God's nature. That's his nature. It's who he is. And you think about that and go, oh, this is who we need to tell the world. This is the God we worship. This is the God we worship. This is who we have a relationship with. Is this God. It's not the God that says, hey, you don't do it, I might smite you. Yeah, that's an old term, okay? Smite. I might smite you. No, God's not like that. I think God would be the point of looking at you and going, you might not want to do that. Consequences may not be anything you want to deal with. It's your choice. I'm going to love you. If you come to me and ask forgiveness, I forgive you for it. We start that, that build that, that fellowship back again. Not going to change the relationship, but it's going to change the fellowship. There's my love. And God's not going to push you away. 
Somebody said, well, with all the things that I've done, I don't know how God could accept me. His nature, because of his nature. I want you to think about this for a minute. We just recently went through a celebration called Easter. Do you realize there was, a, if you look at the story of Easter, there was a side note in there of something that happened. That Jesus knew was going to happen, but he continued to love the person regardless. Think about this for a minute. Is he going to push you away because of things that you have done? Or is he saying, I am still here? Do you realize the cause of the nature of God? Because of the nature of God, Jesus washed the feet of Judas. He washed the feet of the man that he knew was going to go out and betray him. He washed his feet. And I want to look at people that say, well, I don't know that God could ever take me because of all the things that I've done. I want to look at them and go, hey, let's sit down. Let's look at Judas for just a minute with what he did, with what Jesus knew was going to happen. And Jesus continued to love him. He washed his feet. He washed his feet. That is the nature of God. That's the nature of God. He doesn't quit. He doesn't quit. His love is never ending. One more passage I want you to look at. Psalm. If you're still in Psalms, go to Psalm chapter 89. This is a little bit longer passage I want us to read, but follow along because I want you to hear this. And I would even suggest this. As we read through this, believers make it personal. It's not going to be on the screen. So whatever translation you have, make this personal as though you are telling this to God. Psalm 89, starting with verse 5. Lord, your heavens praise your wonders. Your faithfulness also in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can compare with you, Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? God is greatly feared in the council of the holy ones, more awe-inspiring than all who surround him. Lord God of armies, who is strong like you, Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging seas. When the waves surge, you still them. You crush Rahab like the one who is slain. You scattered your enemies with your powerful arms. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and everything in it, you founded them. North and south, you created them. Tabor and Hermon shout for joy at your name. By the way, those are mountains. You have a mighty arm and your hand is powerful. Your right hand is lifted high. Righteousness and justice are the foundation for your throne. Faithful love and truth go before you. Happy are the people who know the joyful shout. Lord, they walk in the light from your face. They rejoice in your name all day long, and they are exalted by your righteousness. For you are their magnificent strength. By the favor, our horn is exalted. Surely our shield belongs to the Lord, our holy, our king, to the holy one of Israel. Who is God? What is God's nature? God is in charge of all. God is in control of all. We're talking about the same God who spoke in the creation of the earth. Catch that for a second. Get this in your mind. The God who spoke and it came into being. The God who said, let there be light. And there was the same God, the very same God is the God that can look at you and say, 
I love you. Is the same God that can look and say, I offered my son on a cross in your place. Place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Secure your eternity. And secure the strength to live day to day. Another conversation that Sheila and I were having this morning. You think about the God who spoke earth into creation. Is the same one that brought Jesus Christ back to life out of the grave. And you realize that it is said that if we place our faith and trust in Jesus, we have access to that same strength. That same strength. We have access to God. Directly to God through Jesus. Because of God's nature. And it's not a thing of God created us and set us spinning off in time and set back and said, good luck, have fun. There goes earth. Wish you the best. Oh, by the way, here's a book to kind of follow to help things. Mm. No, what he did is he created the earth and he is a part of the earth. He has dominion over the earth. He created everything. And then he gave us his word to learn from, to follow from, to learn about him from, to learn about his nature and who he is. And I want us to see this. We talked about this last week. We need to have a reverence for God. We need to have an awe of God. We need to not look at God just as our buddy. But he is God. He is holy, holy, holy. And we recognize him as that. But then at the same time, he wants to look and say, I'm going to offer mercy and grace through Jesus Christ. Because it's the nature of God. Believers, I'm going to do this to you again. I'm going to give you homework. This is on you. I'm not going to check it. Okay? Can't fail you because the homework's what they tell me. But I'm going to give you homework. Here's what I want you to do. The nature of God. Do we believe the nature of God? That God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that we believe the nature of God is who he was, who he is, and who he will be, that we believe that? Do we believe that? If we believe that, will you share that with somebody this week? That I believe God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he said he will do this, and if I place my faith and trust in him, scripture says I have his strength. He shows his strength through his people. Can you can I, can we show that strength? Can we let that strength be shown through our lives of what he wants to do? And we're facing troubles and we look and go, okay, not sure how this is going to turn out. But you know what? I know who's on my side. I know who's on my side. I love it when God puts things together. The hymn of commitment that we're doing here in just a minute, or the song of commitment, is called Give Me a Willing Heart. God, give me a willing heart. That is right, right? Making sure I was reading that correctly. I was like, okay, here we go. I bet it's better be right. But give me a willing heart. You realize that we need to do that, 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 that God is not, because of the nature of God, God is not going to lord this over and go, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, otherwise I'll smite you. But he's one that says, here's what I want you to do, and out of love, that we would do it. And we have to get to the point of, God, give me a willing heart. There are days, parents, you'll get this. Grandparents, you'll get this. There are some days you don't like your kids. You always love them. But there are some days you don't like your kids because they may do boneheaded things. But the love is there. And some days you have to stop and say, they are my child. 
I am going to love them, whether they like it or not. And God's not going to do that, but what we need to do is we need to stop and go, God, give me a willing heart to do this. Give me a willing heart. When I taught school, I had some students that were hard to love. And I would have to pray, God, give me a willing heart to love these kids because I don't know what's going on in their life. God, I don't understand what's going on in their life. They may be living a life that I have no clue about. I had a short story real quick. I had a couple of students that were 7th grade. One of them was 7th grade. People used to talk about why he was so, so such a problem in school that he would fall asleep in class and this and this. And I asked him one day. He was going home every day picking up his uh, first, third, and fourth grade brothers, getting them home, getting them fed, getting their homework taken care of, getting them to bed because mom worked two jobs. And then he would try to get his homework done. Then he would get up early and try to get them ready for school and had an agreement with the, the elementary school to get them there early, made sure they got there on time, rain or shine, and then would drag his way over to school. And people wondered why he was, trying, was, was falling asleep and stuff in class. Hard kid to love. And I had to look and say, God, give me a willing heart to love this kid. You know what's crazy? God did that. And I sat down and talked to this boy one day, and he said, you know, you're the first teacher to ask, and that broke my heart. I started explaining to other teachers what was going on in his life. And it's like, God, you gave me a willing heart to find out what was going on, to love this kid, to do it. And folks, here's what we need to do. We need to ask God to give us a willing heart to show his nature. Because God's nature, when I asked, God actually used me, believe it or not, used me to show his nature to some students. And I think it may have made a difference. But I had to ask for a willing heart because God's nature, he's not going to push you into it and say, do it, do it, do it. His nature is, I'm going to love you. And if you would do this, I'm going to help you. And if you do this, it's going to turn out great because if you do this, my nature is going to show through and people are going to see who I am in your life because as the scripture says, his strength shows through us. That's his nature. And you might be sitting here going, this sounds really good. This sounds really, really, really nice. But I have no clue. And maybe you need to get at the point to place your faith and trust in Jesus. And you just finally will understand the nature of God. Not totally. But you start to understand who is God? What is the nature? That he loves you enough that he would send his son to die on a cross. To suffer through everything that he suffered through. Die on that cross, be buried in that grave, and then come out of that grave and ascend to the right hand of God the Father. And because of that, I can place my faith and trust in Jesus. That what Jesus did on that cross, in that grave, paid for my sin, and that I can be forgiven. And I can place my faith and trust in Him. Because He says, I will take care of you. Scripture says, the Father has put them in my hand, and no one can pluck them out. The Father and I are one. Nobody can take them out of my hand. That you place your faith and trust in Jesus, you're put in the hand of Jesus, and nobody, nobody going to touch you. And that's when you start to see the strength of what God can do through you. He gives you the strength. He gives you the love. He gives you the mercy, the grace. That we start to show up. Because that's his, his nature. Maybe you need to get to that point of saying. I need to be. I need to place my faith and trust in Jesus. When we sing here in a minute. And you want to talk. I'm down here. Come talk to me. I'm going to throw this one out. Maybe you have said. I've placed my faith and trust in Jesus. And I need to be baptized. Guess what folks. There's water ready to go. And if you're willing. And you say. I'm following Jesus. And I want to be baptized. Let's do it. I may send you home in wet clothes, but that's okay. But we're ready. If that's something you need to do, let's do it. It's not going to mess us up. It's not going to mess with our schedule. My kids are coming to the house to have lunch with us. And if I looked at them and said, hey, sorry we're late, but somebody wanted to be baptized. I know both my girls and son-in-laws are looking and go, sure, take whatever time you need. 
it'd be okay. And I don't think anybody in here would be upset and say, um, we ran over time because you baptized somebody. <laughs> if that's what you need to do, then folks do that. If there's somebody, and, and when we're singing here in a minute, come up and look at me and go, I need to be baptized. I'm ready to be baptized. We'll do it. The water's still warm. I got folks that can attest to it. It is warm. So, maybe you just need to get to the point of saying, when, this, when we sing this song, give me a willing heart. Maybe that needs to be your prayer. God, give me a willing heart. Give me a heart to be able to show your nature. Show your strength through me because of who you are. God, I'm facing, I'm facing some stuff. Man, I'm facing some stuff here that, frankly, I don't want to face. Maybe you need to sit and go, God, I need this. Help me with this. What decision do you need to make? Whether you need to make it right there, whether you need to come down here. If you want to come pray at this altar, come pray at this altar. You want to pray where you're at, pray where you're at. Do what you need to do. Do business with God. Because that's part of God's nature. He is there ready for whatever you need. Pray with me if you would. Fathers, we come to this time. God, I thank you as we've talked this morning that your nature, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, that we can trust your nature. And God, I thank you because of your nature that you sent Jesus to die on that cross. But Father, because of your nature, he's not in that tomb. He is beside you. God, we praise you for that. God, I thank you for the, the picture we saw this morning with Cindy being baptized of that death of that old, old self and that rising of a new self that you have given her. Father, we thank you for that. God, I pray that if somebody needs to make that decision today, that they would do that, whether it's to place their faith and trust in you or to follow in believer's baptism. Father, speak and move as only you can. Father, we love you. We worship you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. Let's worship together.